It was a cool, crisp January 6th morning. On my way to that gym, had to go bust down a little bit of something, something, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of shoulders. Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. A little bit of legs, nothing crazy, nothing to get sore about. And before we headed out to go get those fans, I decided I would go get my old lady a king cake for her birthday. Yeah, that's right. She was going to come with me to Lafayette on her birthday because she loved me. Well, I go to Don's Country Store. I pull up. I see they're not open yet, so I was going to wait. I saw one of their workers, and I asked them if they had any cake left. They said no. So it's on the store number two, y'all. Back and out now. About to head to Winn-Dixie. Oh, I sure like a Winn-Dixie kick. Well, guess what? Bag secured at Winn-Dixie. Let's go, baby. Here she go cutting that kick. Oh, she ready. She ready for that first bite. Let's see her take it. Ooh, yummy. She said take it. And then we getting in that car, ready to roll to laughing. We going to get them ready at the fans. Come on, Ricky Bobby, get in the car. Come on, let's go, let's go. Get in that car. Look at Ricky Bobby, too, looking at me like I'm crazy. Probably because I was yelling at this time. Because Ricky Bobby be lollygagging super hard, yo. <laughs> Check him out. Here we go. On the road. Turning on the airline. Getting ready to hit that open road slash bumpy road all the way to Lafayette. Go ahead and enjoy yourself on this journey through time. Y'all, I had to pee pee so bad, I had to pull over at this rest stop right here. Ooh, it felt good. Back on the road. Look at them cypress knees. All right, let me let y'all enjoy yourself again. I just felt like I had to let y'all know that. <laughs> we almost there, y'all. We about to meet up with Scott. I found that red bead plate very interesting. Oh, what up, Scott? How you making out? After throwing that radiator in the back of the Suburban, we decided to go eat poor bars at Old Time Grocery. Good food and good times. Jumping back on interstate, headed back home.
Even took Ricky Bobby to the park for a little while. Let him get his energy out. And now that we home with the setup, time to get to work. You already know. Yo, it's super windy out here and I'm suffering with allergies. So bear with me, had to spray that nasal spray and take an allergy medication. But look, first thing I gotta do in order to get these electric fans in this bourbon is clean them up. I bought this shit from the Dollar Gentle, that Lysol Power Formal. I'm gonna spray that on them thing and see if it'll take some of that gradu off. Here we go. Why that wind so bad? Wow, look at that. Let's see if that's gonna clean that up. Hey right, y'all, that lights all worked pretty good. Too shabby. All right, I'm bringing these fans inside, but the temperature's dropping pretty rapidly here. Dropping pretty rapidly, so let me go ahead and go get a new propane bottle for my heater, just in case I'm working in here tonight. I'm not freezing my little tongs off. Come take a ride with me. Go get me another little propane bottle from the store. Let's go run to the store. All right, y'all, so I got two stops to make. First stop, gotta get that propane thing. Second stop, gonna get a king cake calzone from Rotolo's with apple cream cheese. Boy. I couldn't help myself, y'all. I had to. Let's go get it. We got to head freshy, y'all. I got to roll that window down, let that pressure out that cab before that door to close. All right, we off the Rotolos now. We got the goods. Oh, oh, yes, indeed. Really good. All right, y'all. Dead King Kick. Calzone was super good. Back in the shop. Before I put this electric fan set up in the bourbon, I want to go ahead and show y'all how y'all could test y'all's if y'all ever in this predicament by the house. So, say you pull that fan set up by the junkyard or somebody gives you one like me. Thank you, Scott. Appreciate you. Whatever the case may be, it might have just been sitting outside for a long time and you just want to test it before you put it in. Well, here's how. Let me show you. All right, so polarity in this instance don't really matter. If it spins one way, it'll spin the other, right? So who cares? Go ahead and hook your alligators to those two prongs in there. I don't know if y'all can see that. See that? Yeah, you hook it onto that. You go ahead and ground one out to your battery. You take the other end that goes to the positive and you hook it up there. And that's it, y'all. All you're really doing is just testing it before you get it in the car. And if it don't work in the car, you know it's another problem and not the motors on the fans themselves, right? Just a little tech tip. Let's go ahead and put that thing in that car. All right, y'all, so for this radiator swap, we're going to be using BP Automotive's part number 1017 fan harness and also the AC update kit. Comes with that new sensor, the plug, 
and you gotta tap into your stock computer. So let me show y'all what I gotta do first thing. I gotta remove that. Evidently the, the sensor on a mechanical fan stock rig does something different than the ones that come with electric fans. So I gotta undo that, unscrew that sensor it should have a shredder valve there, so it shouldn't hurt nothing when I unscrew it. And I screw that one in its place. That's step one. Because once you put your fans in, it'll be kind of hard to get your hand right there. So I'm going to do that first. All right, y'all. So first thing I got to do is unplug that. Take me a little wrench. Boss it loose. It shouldn't be too tight because it's just like an O-ring seal. Whoops. All right, y'all. See how it is? All right, y'all. As y'all can see, the switches side by side, they're not the same switch. Just so y'all saying to y'all self, man, why is he undoing a switch to put in another switch? Let me read BP Automotive's instructions. Better understand, y'all. 99, the 2002 Vortec AC update addendum. Since you are adding electric fans to your Vortec truck, you will no longer need the recirculation circuits and the recirculation switch. That's what we just removed. However, you will need to add the newer AC pressure transducer to your truck. The old switch is green and is located below the air intake filter box right beside the radiator. These instructions are included with the needed hard parts to update your truck. Please refer to the picture below to see where the recirculation switch is located. It has a Schrader valve and should not leak during the swap. You will just remove the old switch and replace the O-ring and then simply install the new switch. Cap the old connector with the new cap provided and drill a quarter inch hole to mount if you want. All right, y'all, here's that cap they're talking about. Just going to cap off that old switch connector. Let me, let me do that right quick. Boop. All right, now you just leave that. You zip tie that up. So you're not cutting your old stuff. You're just going to leave it there in case one day. I don't know. I doubt you would ever take the electric fans off. But if you do, all your factory stuff still going to be right here. Just tuck that away. Only thing I will say is, I wish they gave me this O-ring. Now I gotta go find that somewhere. I gotta go to Napa or something. All right, y'all. So I found that O-ring that I needed. 6.8 by 1.9 millimeters in that metric set. It fits it perfect. All right. Let's go ahead and screw that new sensor on, yeah. You should feel that O-ring have a little resistance on it. That's how you know she's sealing. Make sure y'all lube that O-ring too. All right, that's it. Now you're gonna plug your harness in and run it along that older stuff. Zip tie all the way to your computer. All right, take that, plug it in. hard to film this y'all all right you heard the positive engagement run that alongside your factory stuff all right i went ahead and ran it down and i ran it with the factory harness i even used the factory clips i just shoved it in there and then it's right here i'm gonna leave this right here and i'm gonna I'm going to fool with this PCM whenever I got everything in, right? Whenever I could add this AC update kit, whenever I could add my fan harness. And I also got to add the 4L60 to 480 adapter. There's one, there's one thing I got to come tap into in this computer. So 
I'm gonna do all that in one hit. So I'm just gonna leave this right here for now. Let me go ahead and install them fans right there. All right, so there's gonna be a clip here, clip here. And this little clip slides in to these little tabs here, y'all. So shit just drop right in. My two bolts. It uses eight millimeter bolts, yeah. I think that's what I dropped there. Uh, yeah. Fans are installed. Told y'all that wasn't hard. Let's go ahead and put our rad holes back on. Everything should line up like factory. Y'all, right, first thing I want to do in reference to getting this BP Automotive wiring harness in for these fans, I gotta take out this brace right here with a 13 millimeter. Set it to the side. All right, let's go ahead and remove the cover. All right, that's that. Now you can see all this is exposed now. Now we gotta take this and roll it up. Yeah, y'all, just roll it up as much as y'all got to, to to get to everything. You don't want damage in it, wash. All right, y'all, so, so here's the harness. These are the two wires that go to your fan. You got one that grounds to your battery. You got your, your fuse block and your positive wire. First, we got to mount this relay block. First thing I'm gonna do is remove that center relay so I can mount it in the factory location. Like buddy. Just put it to the side, you're gonna need it after a while. All right, you guys. Go ahead and lay, lay the part of the harness that goes forward. Like so, see that groove there? Lay that there. Lay that through there. And then mount this relay in the factory spot. I'm gonna do my best at letting y'all see what I'm doing, yeah? BP Automotive supplies the screw, some washers, and a lock nut. All right, so 
Take that screw, put it like so with a washer. Take it right there, put your other washer in your lock nut. Whoops. Tighten it down. You're going to need your Phillips and a tree is with a zut. You don't need a zut, but it makes it easier. I call that a zut because when I hit that button, it says zut, zut. That's mounting nice. Now you can go ahead and snap your relay back in there. Now you can go ahead and close this back up. Like factory, yeah. That's your new relays for your fan. Goes underneath. It comes out the front by your battery. All right, next step. Run the actual wires that hook to your fan. Down alongside. All your factory stuff. All right. Go ahead and take your harness. Plug it into the fan. You'll hear a nice little snap. That's how you know they end. Then you could just go ahead and secure it with some zip ties the rest of the way for a clean install. All right, next thing you're gonna do is undo the wire off the back of your alternator, your power wire, your 12 volt. This is where you're gonna hook that 12 volt positive to your fuse block, right to the back of your alternator. I snake it underneath this loom here for clean looks. And I'm gonna hook my alternator back up. Install your cover back. And that portion's installed. Your 12 volts. Y'all. Before we go any further, I just want to read this to y'all because I know some of y'all ain't going to think about this, but you must change the alternator if your vehicle has the 105 amp alt. Adding cooling fans to one of these applications and not replacing the alternator with a 145 or higher amp output alt will result in harness or fan damage. Look, I already got a Suburban, so I got the bigger alternator. Just make sure you got the correct one. If you got the 105, take it off and put the 145. All right, y'all, slap y'all cover back on and set this where y'all want it to live. Uh, that looks good right there. I'll go ahead and take it off. And we'll drill our holes off. All right, y'all. Now that y'all got these things drilled and you put your studs in, 
You could go ahead and snap this thing off for the last time. All right, now go ahead and install your fuse block. And that's it. Fuse block is installed. Yes, indeed. See how I got the seal and all the fuses looking good? You could also go in and install this cover at, the t at this point. It looks factory, y'all. Sexy. All right, y'all. From this point, you're only left with two more connections. Your ground that goes to the battery. BP Automotive supplies this right here to take the place of your factory battery bolt. So you take your factory one out. You tighten down your factory ground, right? Then from the back side, you hook the ground from the BP Automotive harness right here. And then you tighten your supply nut. And there you go. Ground made easy, right? Battery, factory battery cable. Your ground from the BP Automotive harness. Last but not least, these are the two wires that are going to get pinned into your ECU. And once you pin them, you simply just plug it in. And look, in this video, I will not be showing y'all how to plug these two wires into the ECM harness. I got... 10 other wires that I have to plug into that thing, and I want to do them all at one time. So I'm just going to tell y'all where they have to go in that plug. In another video, I will show me plugging all these things into the ECM, but I'm going to tell y'all which ones they go in. All right, so this green wire. The green wire will go to the blue connector, cavity 42. And the blue wire will go to the green and or red connector, cavity 33. It says some applications will already have a wire in the red and green 33. This wire will no longer be used. Pull it out and seal the wire off. And just in case you guys want to read the instructions. Green wire will go to the blue connector, cavity 42, and the blue wire will go to the either red or green connector, cavity 33. All right, y'all, that's going to be it for that little electric fan slash wiring harness upgrade. Come back on another video. I will be pinning all this. I just don't feel like doing all that right now. I'm going to do all the wires that I got to pin in that thing at one time. One time only. I got this fan. I got that AC update kit I got to pin in that thing. And I also got that 4L80E wiring harness adapter that I got to pin into that ECM. So I'm going to do all that at the same time. Don't y'all worry. I will show y'all how. It'll just be in another video. Y'all get the gist of this little upgrade, though. Simple plug-and-play stuff, right? You saw the relays went to the factory location. You saw the 12-volt positive went to the back of the alternator. You saw the ground gets grounded straight to the battery with a little supply of adapter. It's a pretty straightforward thing. The hardest thing is to pop the, the covers off. Once you lay that harness where it got to go, that's the easiest, easiest part, honestly. But... Appreciate y'all watching. Catch y'all on the next one. Later, y'all.